Nice badge. Keep an eye on the elevator. I'm, I'm gonna go wait for forensics. Okay. Let me know oh, when they get here. Oh, excuse me. Message from the sheriff. Prince asked more for five reports. If I can't bring back their author, I must bring back the reports at least. I'll know them when I see them. That's not a good sign. Special Agent Smith. The FBI! Finally, some backup. Lieutenant's expecting you. Straight ahead. Watch out for the bloodstains. Forensics hasn't been through here yet. Got it. Go ahead. It's okay. The victim lost a lot of blood. Lieutenant Anderson, I'm in charge of the investigation. Special Agent Smith, FBI. Really? Smith? Is that some kind of joke? No, why? Uh, let it go. Never mind. I'll give you the DL. We got a call from the caretaker around 2.15. He told us that one of his residents was brought in with an injury carried by his bodyguards. We sent a squad car that got here around 2.45. Is the caretaker still here? He's in the living room. But I don't think you'll be able to get anything useful out of him. Poor guy's in shock. Who was the first person on the scene? That would be Baker. He's somewhere around here. It shouldn't be hard to find him. Okay, then what? When they stepped inside, the guys came face to face with that. Do we know who the victim is? Yeah. He had his ID on him. It's the owner, a guy named Jason Moore. I don't know who this guy pissed off, but things didn't work out too well for him. Did you secure all the exits and entrances to the building? Yes, we've got men on the ground floor and in the parking garage. How do you get to the parking garage? You'll have to ask the caretaker. He's the one who took my men down there. Do we know if he had a family? Yeah, a wife and an eight-year-old daughter. The wife, Lydia Moore, 34 years old, architect, dual citizen of Costa Rica and the US, no criminal record. Yeah, we're trying to get a hold of her. The daughter, June, we've looked and she's not here either. What have you got on Moore? He was an asset manager. But if you ask me, he was involved in some shady stuff that we're sure to find out about. It's not every day that an accountant gets his head chopped off. Where are the bodyguards? We haven't found anyone yet. Go on. We're still looking for the head. We're waiting on forensics for everything else, but they're busy with another case. What case? You haven't heard? At one international place. They say it was a real bloodbath. So, you're here to take over the case? No, no. I'm working on something else. Moore's name popped up in one of our investigations. But I can't talk about it. Okay, I'll let my team know. Agent Smith from the FBI is here. We're still in charge of the investigation, so please cooperate with him. Hmm. The blow came from behind. 
He was decapitated. It was a pretty clean cut. Hmm. The flesh is burnt around the bullet hole, over a wide area. He was shot at point-blank range, no doubt about it. There's almost no blood left in him. The injury was post-mortem, and the body must have been lying down. Bullet wound in the right hip. A signet ring with a beaver on it. More went to MIT. There's a retainer here somewhere. Moore's driver's license. This sort of formal decor might impress Boston High Society, but not me. Sorry, I'm busy. They wanted to bring a little vacation back home. Come on. It'll pass. Don't worry. Are you all right? Yeah, just a little faint. I was expecting it, but then... <laughs> A minute, and I'll, I'll head back. The sight of blood. We've all been there, haven't we? No. Ugh, what a stench. Oh, there are blood stains on the garbage chute. Why is the FBI interested in Moore? His name came up in several financial investigations we're working on. Hurry up. We need something, guys. I'll finish you and I'm on my way. Looks like Lydia's planner. Lydia's life seems to revolve around June and her home in Costa Rica, with Jason often absent. The apartment has changed since my last visit. Somebody slept here. <laughs> Mr. Adams? No. This can't be happening. What a nightmare. So much blood. I've got a few questions. I tried to help him. I told him we should call 911. I told him. Sir, listen to me. It's all right. Calm down. You're safe and you did the right thing. I did the right thing. I need you to answer a few questions for me. I... I... <sighs> yes, of course. W what do you want to know? Did you know Mr. Moore well? 
We weren't friends, if that's what you're asking. But we got to know each other. With time. <laughs> he was a creature of habit. Since he worked late, he would often ask me for things at night. A newspaper, batteries, ice. I, I think he asked me for just about everything. I prided myself on always being able to get what he needed, no matter what time it was. You'd have thought he pretty much lived after dark. Like his clients. Did Mr. Moore have many visitors? For a man with his status, it was nothing surprising. But, well... Yes? His visitors mostly came in the middle of the night. I must admit, that's a little unusual. That's what working for us is like. He told me he had a lot of foreign clients, and he had to juggle different time zones. That's what working from home is like. He had colleagues over for late night meetings, too. <laughs> but since little June was born, not as many people came around. That was wise. Did he have any enemies that you were aware of? No. He was a very respectable man. No bad company or anything. Except for us. Without any disrespect to the deceased, were you aware of any extramarital affairs he may have had? Mr. Moore was a good man. He would never have disrespected his wife or even contemplated it, I'm sure. She could have been okay with it. There were no young women coming and going. That's a very inappropriate question. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Do you know his wife? Mrs. Moore is a model resident. She always has something nice to say to the staff. And is the first to welcome new neighbors, too. A true lady. Do you think she could have been having an affair? She's a very respectable woman, who loves her husband very much. I don't know what sick kind of world you live in. And you would certainly not like to find out. They had their ups and downs, just like any couple. The staff had noticed that she went to Costa Rica fairly often without her husband. Was she thinking of leaving him? Not at all. Just the opposite. She begged him to spend more time with her and their daughter. Do you know where she is? Mr. Moore told me she'd gone to their home in Costa Rica. She goes there pretty often. <laughs> She's an architect, and she likes to work in her home country. She has family there. Do you think anyone could have been so angry with her that they could have taken it out on her husband? Oh, no. I don't think so. It's true that lots of people could have been jealous of her. But not to that point. I imagine the girl left with her mother? Not at all. It was the start of the school year, and Mrs. Moore left two weeks ago. I haven't seen her since Monday, when Mr. Moore took her to school on the first day. She must be staying with a friend. I... <sighs> Poor little thing. Thank heaven she wasn't here. Do you know his bodyguards? Yeah, there's uh, Jack, uh, James, and Wu. But you won't hear me singing their praises. Why not? Oh, they're good at strutting around and acting tough when everything is going well. But where were they tonight? Can you tell me that? That was their job, right? They were paid to... To protect him. What do you mean by acting tough? <laughs> More than once I overheard them talking to Mr. Moore, like they were his boss. The world upside down. They worked for us, just like your dear Mr. Moore. I hope they won't find another job anytime soon. Tell me about the evening again. 
Please, what happened tonight? <sighs> Mr. Moore left with his, his three bodyguards uh, earlier in the evening. One of them got in the car, and Mr. Moore came down around midnight. And then? They came back around 2 a.m. Uh, Mr. Moore was limping. He, he was leaning on one of his bodyguards, and <sighs> he was bleeding. Was he injured? I told him I could call an ambulance or a doctor, but he didn't answer. I went closer to insist, but Wu told me they were in control of the situation, that it was no big deal. They went upstairs, and I saw drops of blood in front of the elevator. I told myself they were being unreasonable. What did those two goons know about it? So I called Mr. Moore on the internal line several times. Did he pick up? Not once. So I went upstairs and rang the doorbell, but nobody answered. So I went back down to the front desk and I called you. The lieutenant told me there was an access to the basement. Yes, using the service elevator th through the kitchen. You need a magnetic pass to, to use it. I gave the spare to your colleagues who wanted to go down there. I still have the original. Do you want it? Please. Thank you for your statement. You have to find out who did this, officer. Justice needs to be done for him. <laughs> and for his family. And we need to find out who's messing with us. That's what we're here for. You can count on us. Stick around in case we have more questions. Huh. You managed to calm him down? I thought that would be impossible. Yes, and he was able to answer a few questions. A real jungle in the heart of Boston. A truly peaceful oasis. Why were you looking for peace, Jason? remind him of Costa Rica. It's a whole way of life there. Slow down and enjoy things, in contrast to Jason's life. It seems like gardening is a real passion for Lydia. Not sure Jason shares your enthusiasm. see as well, like my other lives.
Sorry, I'm busy. Where in God's name is forensics? The victim lost a lot of blood. That's not a good sign. I've still got work to do. Go ahead. It's okay. Sorry, Smith, but I've got work to do. This sort of formal decor might impress Boston High Society, but not me. Fine vintages imported from Europe. More knew how to treat his guests. Drafting table. Hmm. That must be Lydia's desk. The blueprints of a house on the west coast of Costa Rica. Pura Vida Extension Project. morning for the first day of school. He surprised me, and I'm coming to see you tonight. Don't tell Apolita, it'll be a surprise to her. And Dad's coming, too. I can't wait to get there. XOXOXOXO. <sighs> Damn it, Lydia. I can't do it without you. If... If you could just see June. I can't tell anyone. I'm not going to make it. I need... I'm sorry. I apologize for everything. I should have left. The three of us should have gone. Stayed at Pura Vida the way you wanted. I'm so sorry for what they did to you. I'll always love you, Lydia. Forgive me. Forgive me. I've never been in this part of the apartment before. Someone tossed a bunch of stuff in this bag in a hurry to leave. Beryl, 
will you ever change? I understand better now. The prince asked more for a complete report on the members of the Primogen. Someone tossed a bunch of stuff in this bag, in a hurry to leave. Bottle of disinfectant. Obviously handled by someone who was bleeding. Bottle of disinfectant. Obviously handled by someone who was bleeding. The concept of a laundry basket seems too abstract for some people. The number you have dialed is not in service. Poems in Lydia's mother tongue. searching here was looking for something specific. Ugh, what a mess. A fortress security catalog. They install highly secure rooms. Fortress security. Nobody told me there would be a retainer here. What are you playing at? Oh, I... I beg your pardon? Don't mess with me. Who are you? Calm down, Mr. Bazori. I meant no disrespect. I work for the Council. Why would the Council have sent her without warning me? Most of the time, they send me to clean up. Are you behind this? No. I got here after it happened. What's that file you've got? Oh, an account file. Have it. Here you go. Okay. Hmm. Let's see how much she knows. All right. What have you found? Oh, I'm a little embarrassed. I'm not really allowed to talk about my missions. I don't have time for this. Give me what you have. Uh, what I've got. Of course, sir. Here. That's everything. You made the right choice. Tell me exactly what they asked you to do. I got a message at 2.20 telling me to go to this address. I was supposed to pick up more and some financial documents. After that, I was supposed to wait for further instructions. Read the message you received. 
Target, Jason Moore. Address, 200 Clarendon Street, top floor. Exfiltrate Target if possible. Otherwise, final elimination. Destroy Katapata's files. Complete mission for further instructions. If I had gotten to Moore before you did... I would have had to take him out. Well, you could have tried. Well... I hope I'm not going to have any trouble. But there's no point in having two of us here. You're going to go home now. Very well, Mr. Bazori. This is where I met Moore for the first time. Human logic is beyond me. What's the point in doing that? Lydia and June at the beach. Son of a bitch wasn't messing around. Have you seen all that cash? I need to see you there. Okay, sure. Nice collection. Working for us has its advantages. A souvenir from the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. Boston Manufacturer's Files. Deeds, stock portfolios. Moore doesn't just manage the Camarillas business. The mayor's deeds. Officer Baker, 
Can I help you? Were you the first person to arrive at the scene of the crime? Yes, sir. My partner and I were the first to get here. Just tell me about it. We got the call around 2.20. The caretaker had called because a resident was injured. It took us about 20 minutes to get here. The poor guy was in a panic. He told us he'd seen one of the tenants, Jason Moore, enter the building, and he looked hurt. He was being held up by his two bodyguards, and he was bleeding a lot. So I went upstairs with the caretaker. We saw blood in the elevator and on the landing. I rang the doorbell, but nobody answered, so the caretaker opened the door. I identified myself. There were traces of blood leading down the hall away from the entrance, and just after that, I uh, found the decapitated body. Did your partner come with you? No, he stayed in the foyer to secure the entrance to the building. Did you touch the body? No. There was nothing I could do to help him, so I uh, secured the scene. I put my gloves on to take his ID out of his jacket pocket so we could identify him. Then I called it in. Where was the caretaker during that time? I told him not to come inside, but he followed me. When he saw the corpse, he was really shaken. He wouldn't let go of me. Then what did you do? I called for backup. They told me that forensics would get here as soon as they could. They were out at another case. That was their top priority. After that? I secured the entrance to the apartment. Were you able to find the bodyguards? No. There was nobody here. But they must be somewhere. We're looking. After that, I searched the ground floor. There was nobody around. But from the looks of things, somebody searched the apartment. When Sergeant Lehane got here, she took care of upstairs. It's a good thing, too, because it took everyone else another 15 minutes to get here. She didn't find anyone there. So there's no sign of the family, then? Nothing. The place is empty. Any leads on what happened before that? When Moore got here, he was injured, right? We're on it. We're still piecing together a timeline. I wonder if this case is connected to the massacre downtown. But what I just don't understand is, where was he going? What do you mean? Well, in Moore's bedroom, there's a suitcase that's packed, and an outfit laid out on the bed, like he was going to get dressed. And? But he didn't get dressed. There were no clothes for his wife or daughter, either. If you ask me, he was going to leave alone. That's it? Oh, yeah. The guys in the parking lot said they saw one of Moore's cars leave after he came home. Hey, do you think the wife was in cahoots with one of the bodyguards to get rid of the husband? I'm listening. Well, a lot of times in cases like these, it's the spouse who did it. What if the wife was having an affair with one of the bodyguards? She packs up her and her daughter's stuff while her lover lures the husband into a trap somewhere. For some reason, things don't go according to plan. He comes home injured and figures out what's going on. He attacks his wife and the bodyguard kills him to protect her with whatever he happens to find. Makes sense, doesn't it? Not bad. Keep digging, Baker. Sorry, Agent Smith, but I'm a little busy right now. It was my greatest pleasure before. Now everything tastes like ashes.
Jean, are you making plans in case things go south? Or are you planning to leave us? An auction. Acquisition of Lot 87. Dejan Siaka. Hmm, a trumpet belonging to Don Ellis. An auction. Acquisition of Lot 87. Dejan Siaka. Hmm, a trumpet belonging to Don Ellis. Can you take a look at the cards, please? I'll run the plates. Hey, mister. You can't go into the parking garage. It's a crime scene. Agent Smith, FBI. Oh, hi. Officer Norton. Hey, they didn't tell me you were coming down. Got something? Wyatt saw more leave at 225. Wyatt? The parking attendant. Pot security guard, pot valet. Anyway, a car that belonged to the victim left in a hurry. Or at least he thought it was more, until he found out he got his head cut off. There's skid marks on the ground and uh, signs of a minor accident at the exit. He must have really been in a hurry. He? What? You said he must have been in a hurry. You're saying it was a man. Oh, no, no. It, it just slipped out without thinking. It could have been a woman. Do you think it was the murderer? We're not sure of anything at this point. I've got a few questions. Where's the witness? Wyatt, he's uh, in the security booth over there. He's super nice. I don't think you'll need to question him again. You mentioned skid marks. Yeah, they're very distinct. They start from his parking space and go all the way to the exit. They clean this place twice a day, so there's no doubt they're fresh. The driver peeled out of here in a hurry. And you said there was an accident near the exit. Yeah, minor one. Broken headlight, paint marks. He must have had a hard time handling it. Do we know what kind of car it was? Yeah, we called it in. It's the victim's sports car. Wyatt said there's only the sedan left. Did you find anything else? No, that's it. Since we're still waiting for forensics, we gotta be careful. But you know how it is, right? Let me know if you have uh, any other questions. Do you know if our backup's on the way? This should take a long time. Did you find anything? Still looking. Hilda's planned for everything, even her eventual end.
Do you know if our backup's on the way? It should take it a long time. A vehicle ran into the wall. Feeding on that is beneath a kindred. Access to the trash is restricted here. Can't be forced. <sighs> Locked. <sighs> no. That's impossible. <sighs> Locked. I have to find a way to open it. Hello, Mr. Bazori. You must be mistaken. I'm Smith, Agent Smith. Yeah, sure. Do I know you? Everyone knows who you are. In the years you've been hunting us, you've acquired a hell of a reputation among our kind. I didn't know you would come. I'm not looking for any trouble. I... I, I didn't do anything wrong. I... Just who the hell are you? Me? I, I'm nobody. The name's Wyatt Alvarez. I was embraced five years ago. Mm. A thin blood. I spent years hunting them when Quentin King ruled Boston. Unfortunately for me, the blood of my sire was already weak. So I can still catch glimpses of the sun, but I don't have actual powers. Who created you? His name was Victor, but he died last year. Do the kindred know you exist? Yeah, yeah. I followed the rules, but the prince told me he never wanted to see me again, so I try not to make waves. I try to help out, here and there. I'm hoping someone will notice one day, and I'll be allowed to become a true kindred. That's not very likely, if you ask me. I hope it works out for you. I'm doing what I can. Actually, if you could put a word in with the Prince, I'd be eternally grateful. I don't get involved in that kind of thing. Of course, obviously. But, seeing as how I'm already working for your child, Mr. Underwood, I thought that maybe... You work for Beryl? Yes. I also work at a red salon, a couple of hours each day. What do you do there, exactly? Cleaning, mostly. What are you doing here, then? Uh, I thought it was a pretty cushy gig. It leaves me with a lot of spare time, even while I'm on the job. And it also means I can live at night. Are you involved in what happened up there? Not at all. I swear. I've got a sweet job here. I'd never risk it. So what happened? I've got no clue. My shift started at 10 p.m., as usual. The sixth floor tenant left around 11. At midnight, one of Mr. Moore's bodyguards came down to get the car. They were going to a party, apparently. I didn't see them come back. Then, around 2.20 or so, one of Mr. Moore's cars went flying out of here. It hit the wall near the exit. Did you recognize the car? 
Yeah, it was his sports car. The only one like it here. Did you see who was behind the wheel? No, it's got tinted windows. I thought it was Mr. Moore at first. But from what happened upstairs, <laughs> I doubt it now. Hey, were you the one who... You really think if it was me who did it, I'd be standing around here trying to figure out what happened? What can you tell me about Moore? I saw him a lot. He's the tenant I got to know best because of his working hours. And he was the most generous when it came to maintaining his cars, too. Anything in particular about Mrs. Moore? Yeah, I see her every once in a while. Sometimes I see her with a girl, coming back from vacation. Sure is good they weren't here tonight. What makes you say that? Well, Mrs. Moore's car. I haven't seen in the garage for weeks, and she's the one who took the girl to school. Mr. Moore told me they were on vacation, and he was going to go join them soon. Did you see the bodyguards today? James came by earlier this evening to move Mr. Moore's car, but I haven't seen them since. Hey, what kind of cooks have you got in your trunk? Oh, I see you've found my little treats. I haven't got much there. There have been a lot of orders lately. I, I, I must still have some of that rust elixir left. How do you open the dumpsters in the garbage room? What dumpster? The dump... <laughs> Are you toying with me? No, but the cops already looked. There's nothing there. Open it. Mr. Missouri, I promise you won't find anything there. And I can't open it anyway. It's for staff only. Why do you want to go through the trash anyway? It's none of your business, damn it. What's your deal, Wyatt? There's no deal. I'd even be happy to help you. Listen, we're just gonna forget this conversation ever happened. And Excuse me? You didn't just try to corrupt my memories, did you? Oh, no. Uh, I I'm so sorry, Mr. Missouri. I shouldn't have. I know. <laughs> How can I make it up to you? You can start by not wasting my time. I hate that. Yes, but it's just that you gotta understand. I've got good reasons. What reasons? You're not gonna like what I've been doing. I'm sure. Open it now. Just promise me you won't touch anything. Some of my stuff is in there. Please, don't touch it. I give you my word that I won't touch anything. That's the best I can do. Really? Don't make me say it again. All right, all right. Your reputation precedes you. I can take you at your word. All right, it's open. Wouldn't you rather tell me what you're hiding in there? Well, I cook a little. A guy's gotta survive. I don't have to tell you that. I don't make a whole lot of money here. What do you cook? Oh, a little of everything. But I've got all my stuff in there. And there's some pretty rare ingredients. Rare? Yeah. And kind of illegal, too. Such as? In some recipes, well, I use vials of Kindred's blood, for instance. Whose blood? Well, it depends on what I can find. Okay, but what have you got right now, exactly? If I tell you, can it... ...stay just between us? You're not fucking going to start again. Okay. O okay, I... ...I managed to obtain some of... 
Quentin King's blood. Where did you find King's blood? You can find anything on the black market, you know. <laughs> so you're not sure it's actually his blood? Yes, it is. I had it tested. And when I used it in one of my formulas, the effects were off the charts. It took me a week to come down, and I still don't know if it was real. That guy was something else. One more thing, boss. Don't call me that. I hope we'll meet again, Mr. Missouri. to see you here. Woo. If it was a bodyguard who died in the lobby, where the hell is more? <sighs> Nothing. Why, it's makeshift lab. And it's not meth. Who would want to take that? Empty soda cans. A shoe with worn out leather. I wonder what he's cooking with that garbage. Old chicken feet. Rusty cans. to be recycled. How can I help you, Agent Smith? So, what's it like to be a thin blood? You're curious, aren't you? Usually, you hunt us down without asking any questions. There are rules, Wyatt. Yeah, but I never asked to be this way. If you look at it that way, I'm innocent, if that means anything to you. Like I said, there are rules. If we don't follow them, there will be chaos. But it's unfair. <sighs> That's the Camarilla for you. You could have gone to the Anarchs if you didn't like our rules. Or we can change things from the inside. We're eternal. We don't know how to change. We were hunted under Quentin King. Look at us now. Things are already starting to change. I hope so, for your sake. So, what's it like to be a thin blood? It sucks. Yeah, I can still go outside during the day, but it's not all it's cracked up to be. The descendants just can't understand. Sure, it's nice. More than nice. I've been roaming the night since 1745. Do you have even the slightest idea what that does to you? How it changes you without even realizing it, without wanting to. It eats at you from the inside. But I'm still not complete. So if I had to choose, I'd rather live at night and be like you. Thin buds are the dregs of society. We're always wondering what's going to happen to us. You 
Of all people should know that. If we want to be like you, even a little bit, we have to come up with potions that have a temporary effect. I found your cook shop. You didn't touch anything, I hope. I take what I want. Yeah, yeah. Of course. It's just that... It's taken me years to find some of those things. <laughs> so what? No, no, it's nothing. I hope you found what you were looking for. I went through your trash. So? Are you interested in one of my ingredients? That's not really what I've got a problem with. What? You didn't tell me about the man's head in a plastic bag. W what But what the hell? Is it more? No. That head belonged to one of his bodyguards. I... But... It wasn't me, Mr. Missouri. I swear. I don't know anything about it. You want me to believe that it's there by sheer accident? I swear, it's... You gave me the runaround so I wouldn't go through the trash. But no. And then I just happened to find a decapitated head. I know what it looks like, but I swear, I had no idea. But everything points to you. But it's not my trash. I don't know what people throw in there. So what you're telling me is that you had no idea there was a head in your trash. I swear, Mr. Bazori. If I didn't want you poking around in the trash, it was just because of my laugh. I didn't know what you'd think. I had no idea someone had thrown a human head in there. Okay. Let's say I believe you. Happy to help. beneath a kindred. Agent Smith, FBI. Oh, hello. McLean. Can I help you? Just a few questions. Moore had several cars, right? Yeah, I think so. But you better talk to Wyatt about that. Your colleague mentioned an accident that happened tonight. Do you know anything about it? Oh. No, not yet. Wyatt told us everything he knows. You questioned the caretaker when you arrived? We didn't have to. Wyatt told us everything we needed. He's a real team player. Do we have access to where the trash is kept? No, there's no garbage room that I could find. Well, you missed it, but... Just ask Wyatt about it. He'll know for sure. If you want to find out more, you should talk to, uh... Wyatt. Oh, so you know him too. Clearly, the driver had difficulty handling it.
there. That's good. Should put some money on that. Sorry, Agent Smith, but I'm a little busy right now. June at the beach. Hmm, there was a lot of money involved. We're not going to get a return on our investment anytime soon. A thank you letter from Fortress Security. After the installation of a system for more, maybe he kept it for reference. I've already heard about this company somewhere. Jason, Lydia, and June. The little family all together. And in large format. His MIT class ring. Right where you can't miss it. The same one I saw on the body. Lydia. Radiant and beaming. I've got what I need. Let's go back to the prince. 